Did you know there are only a few days in a month that you can actually get pregnant? This period is called your fertile window. But here is the thing. Before you can find it, you need to understand your menstrual cycle. Hi, my name is Tech Larry Guyogali. I'm a medical doctor from Nigeria. In this video, I'm going to tell you the best days for intercourse if you are trying to get pregnant. If you are trying to get pregnant, you need to understand your menstrual cycle because it is your body's way of preparing for pregnancy. The first day of your period is day one of your menstrual cycle. It is the day re bleeding begins, not just putting. And your menstrual cycle continues until the day before the next period starts. Now, a typical cycle length is 28 days, but anywhere from 21 to 35 days is also considered normal. Here is a simple way to understand how to count your menstrual cycle length. If your period starts on July 1st and the next period comes on July 22nd, that is a 21-day cycle. If the next one comes on the 29th of July, that is a 28-day cycle. If the next one comes on the 31st of July, that is a 30-day cycle. And if the next one comes on August 5th, that is a 35-day cycle. You need to understand how to count the length of your menstrual cycle because it is the first step towards knowing your fertile window. Now, you may ask, why is this important? It is important you know this because ovulation, which is the release of a matured egg from the ovary, happens about 14 days before your next period. So if you know how to estimate when you ovulate, you'll be able to estimate when you are most fertile. Here is an example. If your cycle length is 28 days, ovulation may happen at about day 14. But if your cycle length is 30 days, ovulation may happen around day 16. But the exact day of ovulation is not constant. Things like stress, illness, travel, and even changes in weight can shift ovulation. So now let's come back to fertile window. Fertile window is that time of the month when you are most likely to conceive. For most people, it is the five days leading up to ovulation, the ovulation day itself, and the day after ovulation. The reason is because sperm can survive up to five days in a woman's body, while an egg can only survive for 12 to 24 hours after ovulation happens. So this is the best opportunity to get pregnant in a month. Now that you know what happens during ovulation, I know what fertile window is. Let's talk about how to track ovulation. The first method we're going to talk about is the calendar method. To use this method, you need to get a calendar and mark the first day of your period every month for at least six months. This will be able to get a clear picture of your cycle length. Now, the important thing you need to know when using this method is that ovulation happens about 14 days before your next period starts. So if you're trying to conceive, the best time to have sex will be the five days leading up to ovulation, the ovulation day itself and the day after ovulation. But there's a catch with this method. You need to know that this method won't be reliable for you if you have irregular cycles. The second method we'll talk about is tracking the cervical mucus. Now, hormonal changes during your menstrual cycle changes the amount and consistency of your cervical mucus. You are most likely ovulating and most fertile if your mucus is heavy, wet, and slippery. It will have the consistency of raw egg whites. So if you see this kind of mucus, it is a sign that your fertile window is open and you should have sex. Now, the next method we'll talk about is the use of the basal body temperature. So use this method, you need to get a basal body thermometer because it is more sensitive than a regular thermometer. If you take your temperature measurement every day, you will notice a rise in temperature after ovulation has already happened. You need to know that this rise in temperature happens when ovulation has already occurred. So the basal body temperature method is not the best for predicting ovulation in advance if you are trying to conceive, but it is useful to understand your pattern of ovulation. Another method we will talk about is the use of ovulation test kits. Just like pregnancy test kits, this can be used at home. They check the urine for presence of luteinizing hormone. When a test is positive, it shows that luteinizing hormone has surged and ovulation will happen within the next 24 hours. So when you get a positive test, it is a sign that your fertile window is open and you should have sex. Some women experience mild pain on one side of the lower abdomen during ovulation. This is called mid-cycle pain. Not every woman will experience this, but if you do, it can also be a sign that you are ovulating. Now that you know how to track ovulation, let's talk about when you should have sex. If you are trying to conceive, the best time to have sex is during your fetal window, which is the five days leading up to ovulation, the ovulation day itself, 
and the day after ovulation. So if you are trying to get pregnant, you should have sex every day or at least every other day in the five days leading up to ovulation, the ovulation day itself and the day after. This way, healthy sperms are present and ready for when the egg is released. So if your menstrual cycle length falls outside the 21 to 35 day window or your menstrual cycle length differs from month to month. So, some months, it is 30 days. Other months, it is 23 days. You should see a gynecologist to know the reason for this. If you are below the age of 35 and you have been trying to conceive for a year, you should see a fertility specialist. If you are above the age of 35 and you have been trying to conceive for six months, you should also see a fertility specialist. And if you are above the age of 40, you should see a fertility specialist sooner to know the reason why you may be finding it difficult to get pregnant.